All right, my friends, how are you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of our City Zoo Build Tropical Wings Zoo. So my friends, here we go, it's time for another episode. How lucky are you guys? Um, you're gonna basically get two episodes of the space of a week. God knows how I've managed to do it, but I have. Um, last episode, my friends, in case you've missed it, is linked above for you right now. Feel free to go and click that link, go and watch the last episode before you crack on with today's, or you can just stick with me and you'll sort of see what we were doing last time anyway, my friends, but you get to see it in more detail in the last episode. Uh, today, we're gonna crack on with something new. Another new animal has been added to Tropical wing zoo but I still haven't started what I said I was gonna start last episode yes typical Dan getting sidetracked but anyway my friends let's jump in and take a look what I've been up to shall we so here we are my friends we're in tropical wing zoo we're at the entrance we always start at the entrance every single episode and I don't know why I do this because when I was sitting there thinking about it just before I was gonna start recording I give it away on the thumbnail anyway don't I so I don't know, it's just the way I like to do things here with the Tropical Wings series. Now, I said to you guys, now that I'm, you know, working a bit more on the YouTube channel, we were going to up the content, we were going to try and pump more videos out, and so I've been really trying to find a fine balance, and I think I found it this week, um, but it has been a, a detriment to my voice, so I'm going to throw it out there that I have not been all that great. Emily's had a bit of a cough, and I think I've got it, and so my throat's a bit sore, so apologies if there are some and pauses uh, during the course of today's video because of me coughing or whatnot but we'll try and get through this the best we possibly can my friends so um yeah let's just crack on shall we let's take a look at what i've been doing so I've built a new habitat, that's first and foremost. Secondly, I've started some work on the infrastructure. Um, it's very unfinished, I'm gonna say that. Not the habitat, the habitat's finished, but the infrastructure stuff is very, very unfinished. And it's just basically I've run out of time. I wanted to get the episode out, and I think the, the real nuts and bolts of the episode is the habitat, and it really ties up the area that we were working on last time as well. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to show you this. And I've also started work on potentially like the next habitat, which I'm might work on I'm not sure I don't know I keep getting sidetracked I keep seeing ideas and I keep thinking of things I want to do and then I get sidetracked and yeah my plans have changed where this project's concerned I'm going to throw it out there as well I've seen some really cool stuff that I want to try and uh so yeah the way I was going to do things might be changing anyway but um yeah let's start with the inf Ugh, infrastructure if I can get my words out we we'll start with the infrastructure first uh, you will remember the last episode obviously the big thing in the last episode was obviously the Aldabra tortoise habitat, um, we did the car park, we added a few bits and bobs to kind of like fill the space in and whatnot, um, I, and this building had sort of been started, hadn't it, last episode. Now, um, this is a bit of both this building, this is going to be, half of it's going to be like not very detailed at all, and then I think at the end, by the time we bring this zoo to an end, the other half's going to be really detailed, because this is actually, the front of it is just a facade, uh, you know, the street view, it's just a facade, the, the sides you're actually looking at now, but the back of the building, not so much, because we've actually put some staff buildings in here, I thought it was the best place to put them, and it kind of masks it, and it now brings us a secondary kitchen and stuff uh, into the zoo, which we needed, because we've added animals over this side, that I think our zookeepers uh, need another kitchen to get to uh, and it'd be a bit quicker but essentially basically what this is is we've just started another backstage area gang um, I'm trying to stay with a very familiar theme of all the backstage buildings I'm, I'm trying to go with uh, you know this sort of theme it is slightly different to what we've done on the old, on the other stuff but it's just because it's a very different shaped building but as you can see this is like our vehicle access here and I'm leaving this quite wide, this road, because there's going to be some bigger animals over this side. So I feel like the, the foot traffic and the car traffic and whatnot, it would be much bigger vehicles that would be coming in and out of this space. Um, you'll see there's a piece here. Now, what I am going to do, I'm going to go with this like design where there's going to be like a roof to section that's going to go across here. And it's going to join it to another building this side. So that all of this here will actually be undercover. Um, I've kind of seen this design on an industrial building locally, actually, 
funny enough, I, I go for quite long walks uh, with the dog and whatnot, and I passed this building, it was really cool, I had these two buildings either side and then this covered section, and I think, I'm going to go with that, and I'm going to try that out and see if it works, um, because these backstage areas, these backlot areas, we want them to be just as interesting as the main zoo as well, um, the detailing's been kept to a real minimum, back here at the minute you know why i'm doing this gang i want all of the guest facing stuff to be heavily detailed and look as nice as possible and then when we are getting to the end of the product uh, uh, project i will go straight in and i will touch up all these areas and make them look glorious so that when we do our final zoo tour uh, it will look very very interesting and it will look really really cool but yeah this is just basically that's what it is and uh, we're really starting to get to grips with it um you will see there's a gate here because obviously we're just doing vehicle access in this one. There's going to be a gated entrance this side. Um, and then, yeah, as I was saying, we've kept the road nice and wide because we're going to go with some bigger animals up this end. Um, but yeah, I'll take you in so you can see what I mean. Look, not detailed at all, but then I've placed walls in place because this bit here is going to be detailed. And that's kind of how I'm playing it, basically, gang. Um, I think this is going to be the best way but, uh, to really kind of get around using too many pieces on areas that we're not going to look at most, most of the time. I have put a ladder access here because I need to do all of the sort of vents and whatnot on the roof. Um, and that's a design I'm going with with the back lot areas in this uh, project. Uh, We've got these little bin ports, some car parks. Um, we've got our little archer here because he helps with all of my sizes and whatnot. Um, and then, yeah, you'll see the staff room is being used, um, you know, by these lazy sods who uh, have decided that it's time to take a break. But, yeah, the staff room this side. And then this side, we've got our uh, second kitchen, ladies and gents. And we need it because, obviously, we've got a new animal here. We've got tortoises here. And then, obviously, we do have the chimpanzees and whatnot quite close by. And eventually, what's going to happen is, just so you can kind of get a picture for what I'm going for here, um, this is obviously all fenced off. And this will be fenced off as well because we don't want our guests being able to get through here but there's actually going to be a, quite a large gate here so that our zookeepers will be able to take sort of like uh, buggies and whatnot into the main zoo to move you know things around and we're going to do a similar gate this side and that's why I've got this sort of real open plaza area uh, for our guests because they're going to go off into another sort of part of the zoo I'm not sure what they're going to go off into uh, at, at present I haven't really thought about it but um but I knew that's what I wanted to do here. So eventually there will be quite a large sort of gate here and we'll probably carry this sort of fence along, uh, you know, here to join up to it. Uh, and then I'm going to use this fence design uh, here and we'll probably come round this way. So then I can just plant this up and it'll all come together basically. And that's the plan. Uh, to do with this area in the future. Um, I have tied up a few things where the tortoise habitat is concerned. There was a few bits that weren't finished last time. Uh, I've got some vents and whatnot on the ceiling, uh, on the roof, I should say. You will see now this is all fenced off properly. This is like our staff access area. Uh, and then you'll see that like um, this little walkway is now finished. This actually goes all the way up here so that we have real, really quick access for the staff members and the guests don't walk over here either but it looks as though the guests still have access clever way of doing it by using the floor design um you know ideas that i do i've just looked at that building there and i've realized that's something i need to add on that other building but it's okay i can go in and do that at a later date so yeah i've done that um we'll talk about all the foliage and whatnot in a minute because i kind of consider that all part of this build but yeah that's all complete and that joins up back here um so that it's super quick access to these staff buildings back this way uh, and we probably will do another access point here so we'll bring a staff path up this way as well um because it's always good to have more than one access for your staff and then there's just a few you know there's a few bits where i've put some plants in because it, it's very heavy concrete so it's nice to bring a bit of color and i'll probably do the same towards the front as well i might put some plants in the front here uh put a couple of seated areas in for our staff and whatnot i know they don't use them but it's just a cool way to bring detail into your zoos basically so yeah that's what i've been doing there and then uh like i was saying where the tortoise habitat is concerned we tied it all up um as you can see we put all of the the trim to the pathways all in now. I put some seats in. Uh, we've got access and numerous points to get to your tortoises and it doesn't encroach on the main access. So it's one of these situations where you can go and look at the tortoises 
uh, should you wish. But if you don't want to, straight on up and you'll go to the next animal, basically. Um, all the planting's kind of been done. And then, as you can see, I've started to get all of the education boards in. Um, they're not, I don't know if I like them this way up here because they do look quite large. But when I flipped it the other way, then I didn't like it that way either because it's too big. I wish we had all the screens they've added to the game. I wish they added a smaller education board one because there's only one of the screens that works officially as an education board you can use the small ones and you can do really in interesting designs on stuff but they don't actually work as an education board they work more as an more as an advertising hoarding which is a bit of a shame um and obviously you still want to be educating your guests so you have to use the official one so it's quite a difficult thing but i feel like we've done uh, you know a, a pretty good job um there's a piece there that i don't want there but it's all right i'll delete that out later um but yeah so that's the that's the education board there and then if we dive inside i've put the same one on this wall as well and uh, like i was saying before i am going to be putting some smaller ones on the walls and scattering them about so uh, it looks pretty cool in here as well still haven't got around to uh doing this room unfortunately because i've been working on a habitat and i thought that you guys would uh, prefer to see another animal uh you know in the zoo than uh, me worrying about that room just yet um that's that's something that again we could probably work on at a later date we could save the pieces for now on the habitats and then just worry about it right towards a later date if we really wanted to uh but yeah the the the, the tortoise habitat i've got to say is i actually think this is bold considering some of the builds i've done it's one of my favorite builds because it's a very different building to anything I've ever attempted before. And I was so glad to see in the comments in, last, in the last episode how many of you really like it as well. Because I said in that episode, I thought it would be a bit marmite. I'm not sure if people would, would, would dig it. But you did. You absolutely loved it. Um, and I'm glad you did because it's slowly becoming one of my favourite builds. Um, because it wasn't super time consuming. It was a little bit. Like, it took me the best part of you know a few days to do it. But... But, um, you know, I feel like once now we've added all of the foliage and whatnot, it really has kind of filled that gap exactly how I wanted it to. And it's nice when things come together perfectly. So now let's have a look at what I've been building, ladies and gentlemen, to kind of it sort of it goes with that. It sort of supplements what we've done. I've used the same sort of building style. Um, and yeah, I think, I think this is going to be, I think you're going to like this gang. It's not, it's not, it's not a special build. I'm going to throw out there. It was a pretty, um, it was a pretty, I don't want to say it was, uh, it wasn't time consuming because bits of it were, but it was a painless build. That's what I will say. So if we come through the doors and you exit in your tortoise habitat, you've been in there, you've seen the tortoises, you've had a really good time. You come out to, you come out to this point here. And obviously, we've added in all these details for the backstage area and whatnot. So you can't see the uh, you can't see the horrid car park. The people going to car park can't get a sneak peek into the view. We're keeping it all a mystery. Um, you will see. Obviously, we've added our staff point here, and we have that staff point there. Uh, and we've got nice fences and whatnot to kind of shield these areas. Um, all this fence has been brought together now to kind of keep our um, staff and our guest area separate which is nice i'm actually thinking about covering this in some vines maybe because i think just a bit more green in here might be nice but i might leave it open as well because i don't know we've added some foliage and it's really kind of engulfed the area uh they might it might end up being a bit too much i've realized there's a couple of bits i've missed because I wanted it all to be like really unison. I've missed this on the new building. I, I can always go in at a later date though. It's not a problem. Uh, so yeah, you've come out and this is what you met with. Nice little bench if you want to take a seat after enjoying some time inside, get yourself together. And then as you come out, you now come round this corner and it is very heavy on the foliage. And some of you might think, is it a bit too dense? Is it not? I want it to feel like this in, in places in the zoo. I want the nature to really take over. And I think the best way to do that is with your foliage and some zoos will go very heavy and some zoos don't now colchester zoo is a real good example of a zoo that's gone super super heavy on its foliage not only in the exhibits but on the outside of the exhibits as well you will see foliage there that's clinging on to everything uh, and i really like that because i i love i love being i love feeling at one with nature like i've, I've already mentioned i go on a lot of long walks and some of the walks that me and the dog go on we go through forests and all sorts and i just absolutely love it and so i kind of want to bring 
bring that feeling to the zoo, but without it feeling claustrophobic. And, you know, to, to some extent, I feel like this maybe is leaning a bit towards the claustrophobia side because it is very, very tight. But as you come around the corner, you're met with your new Nile Monitor Habitat. Now, I've obviously done an indoor habitat for the Nile Monitors. Some people like this, some people don't. But notoriously, nine times out of ten, this is our zoo's keep Nile Monitors. And the reason for that is they are very good escape artists. They're very good at getting out. And they, they're, they're a dangerous animal. They're not, you know, they're not, not to be messed with. They're relatively big you know lizard and they do bite and you know they it will hurt so zoos have to be very very careful about the way they keep them and so i like doing indoor exhibits with the nile monitor now as you know there's a few settings that i turn off so that i can not worry about space requirements and whatnot because i think the space that some of the animals require but by the game saying are just a little bit too extreme and the nile monitor is one of them if you go to any zoo these guys do not have the biggest habitats. This is a big habitat, though, for the monitors. I will say that it is a fairly large habitat, but there's two in here. Um, so we've changed it up a bit from what we did in JCP, because in that we only had the one the one guy in there who was in a relatively small habitat. But I've, I've probably made this one twice the size of the one we did in JCP. Um, it's a very different look. Uh, we've still got the swimming pool area, which I really like, because it's good to see them swimming around as well as walking about. Um, and I, I really like it. I really feel like it's come together the ceiling is very very low and I've, i it's literally on the cusp so that the zookeeper can get in so that's the only bit that was a little bit of a pain because i had to bring the terrain up to help with the pool area because i wanted the guests to be able to see the water and i'll show you exactly what i mean in a minute but i wanted the guests to be able to see them in the water but at the same time when you do that then you have to bring the land level up to match and it is hard to get that balance right so uh yeah it was a bit of a pain but i feel like we got around it so yeah this is your null monitor habitat so it's done in a very similar style to the other side uh, there are some differences obviously i've done a different roof style and whatnot and it'll give you a good view of uh of all that in a moment but uh yeah if you come over to the window as you can see they're already a little a little uh damaged which is no surprise there i've got the education in on the side here gang uh i need to put you know some trim around the edge and whatnot to uh make it look nice uh but uh but yeah that's your, your sort of education now and then uh, this is the habitat my friends so if i dive on inside this can be quite difficult for you guys to see because it is like i say the ceilings are, are, are relatively low in here but i've gone with a go away green as i always do because uh you know it's a it's a it's a big thing that a lot of zoos do um and then as you can see the the, the ground is a little all over the place it it, it is and i feel I, I will say this i think that zoos probably would have gone with something a little flatter especially with an indoor exhibit uh, and tried to get those levels a different way but this is the way i wanted to do it and i feel like it's come out really nice it's fairly lush with the uh foliage and whatnot i wanted it to sort of um feel like it was done in a similar style to the aldabra habitat because it's all supposed to be one sort of experience over here and uh yeah so they're both in the pool at the moment as you can see enjoying a enjoying a swim i've got it on pause gang because it's just easier to to work my way through the game with it on pools but yeah they're both in the both in the pool enjoying a swim now the pool area uh, needs a little finishing off i'm gonna be honest with you uh what i'm thinking of doing is actually hanging vines from the light unit that we've built um i think that might be pretty cool we could even do like a hanging basket from it and then hang some flowers or something like that or potentially even build a ledge and have some flowers like uh, cascading down off the side there and i also need to put like drainage and things like that in the bottom of the in the bottom of their like swim area but as you can see i've not gone crazy with the swim area you know they are a water going reptile but um, i've not gone mad with that i i feel like the size of the pool is uh you know is is big enough and then you look at the size of the habitat and they've got a lot of room that they can walk around and they can walk around the whole bit it's not just you know there's not bits they can't get to they can get to all of it basically gang uh, the hardest bit of this was because of those terrain levels being all over the place was uh being able to get the zookeeper uh, I, I don't know why that's like that i'm going to have to just delete that out because that's not supposed to be there okay lovely job uh let's just do that because i have no idea why that was there 
I generally don't. Uh, but yeah, so uh, as you can see, that's the only bit that was a bit of a, a bit of an issue was obviously the terrain levels. And so um, maybe this isn't that realistic. I don't know. Probably not, to be honest. Would they have built it this way that the zookeepers would have to walk up in like this? I'm really not sure, but um, it's just the way I wanted to do it, you know? Subjective realism, maybe. But uh, yeah, they've got their little area here. Uh, and then we've got like some planters and whatnot. This is a zoo, the keeper's area that they come into before they would enter the exhibit. That room needs finishing, but it's one of those rooms that I'm not going to worry too much about right now. And then, uh, yeah, there's not really much more more to say about the inside. But I feel like I, I've, I've done a, a relatively good job considering, you know, the pain that I had with the terrain levels. I feel like it looks really, really nice. That was the only pain. Other than that, this was a painless build. The building came together, the shape of the building came together really, really quickly. And then when it comes to doing the inside, I was like, well, I want this pool, but how am I going to make that work? Maybe I should have brought the terrain level up to underneath the window. Maybe like this bit here, I should have come up higher and then it wouldn't look, um, so, so then it wouldn't look so crazy. But I can always do that at a later date if I want to. Probably not now the glass is in, but but um, but yeah, maybe that was the bit that was sort of um, holding it back a little bit. Is the way that it comes down. But I just thought if you're standing at the window, it's a really cool way to look at the animals. You know, they would walk all the way down here, um, and you'll see them walking around the outside and whatnot. So you get a pretty good view, and they bask on these rocks as well. And I'm going to actually hang at like a basking light over this so it looks similar to what we've got over the other side basically um and uh, so yeah that's that and then if we just take a look at the building because i know a lot of people like to see the buildings as well as the inside uh yeah this is what i was saying so it's a slightly different sort of roof design that we've gone with because of the shape of the building and whatnot uh you know this one is uh, a little different but at the same time i've tried to use similar colors and match it up and get it looking nice uh there will eventually be um uh, a drain pipe coming down off this once we get all of this area in uh, this bit on the back I've added this bit and made it look a bit different because this is sort of like where all of the climate control stuff would live um, and I'm going to put like a fake door on the back here because I want it to uh, act as though that's where all of the all of the filtration for the pool and where all that stuff lives basically would be in this little box at the back um and then yeah this is just like a little bit that's on the back of the building as well the the, the roof was a little bit of um was a little bit of a task to get right um because the building was slightly off uh with the with the uh, dimensions and that that i built so we do have a little bit of an overhang uh in places but um all in all i I think I did an all right job in getting it to come together uh, the way I did. And I really like the way it looks. And I especially like the way this whole area looks now. And that's the big thing. When you're building your habitats, so obviously I've been doing lots of how-to episodes where, you know, I've been giving you hints and tips and I've been telling you how I do things. And one of the big things I'd say is obviously if you're not just creating like a one habitat and putting that, you know, uh, you know, and having a look at that and having a bit of fun. If you're actually building a big project, you're building a big zoo like I am, you've got to think about how each thing is going to come together, how each thing's going to connect, how are they going to complement each other. And I just feel like this whole area now really complements the next part, uh, you know, amazingly. Like, uh, you know, uh, if, if we're actually looking at this now, to think where we started, you know, a couple of episodes ago, we were literally left with this piece here and this little, little bit of building, weren't we? And now look what we've filled it with this whole area has been filled with all of this and uh, this uh, this on its own the bit that we've built over the last two episodes on its own generally some of the best work i've done and especially some of the best sort of foliage detail work some of the best work that you know i've done as far as uh you know different build style different building styles that's a big thing because um you know especially the glass house i've never done anything like that before um, and then, yeah, to kind of com complement it with the wood and whatnot. Um, one of the big things I have an issue with, one of the big problems I have, is colour combinations. Finding the right colours, finding stuff that's going to look real and realistic, especially wood tones. Um, that sort of orange-ready tone was a really difficult one to find. But uh, now that I have, I think I'll definitely be using it a bit more. 
throughout the project basically but um yeah there's not really much more to say about the build do let me know in the comment section below though my friends what you make of the the, the new addition to this i thought the nile monitor was just a was just a good addition to this area obviously we've got the Aldabra tortoises that are from, you know, the Seychelles, which is an island just off of, uh, you know, mainland Africa. And then obviously we've got an African uh, lizard species in the Nile Monitor. We found all over Africa. Just thought, you know, that would be good, sub-Saharan species and whatnot. So, yeah, just thought it would be a cool thing to sort of add. And I think, you know, the whole cold-blooded theme all really goes together but i guess we should move on and talk about next episode so my friends this is the zoo at the moment this is this is kind of where we're at um i feel like when you look at it from above it looks pretty cool doesn't it do you know what i really like about this project that i would argue i've never said this about the others but what i like about this project the most at the moment is there's definite terrain differences i'm playing around with terrain a lot more i'm playing around with water a lot more and i'm really pushing the boundaries when it comes to the way my paths move and now they're and now they're interlinked with the foliage and whatnot um you know i used to move very parallel before whereas this is very all over the place it's very higgledy piggledy and uh yeah it's just coming to give up very very nicely now Next episode, my friends, I keep saying I'm going to do the meerkats, the aardvark and the fennec fox. I keep saying I'm going to do it. And the trouble I've got at the moment with that, and by the way, for those that may be new, they're going here. Or well, that's the plan anyway. They're going to go there. Okay, so I keep saying I'm going to do it. Now, my issue with it is that every time I sit down to do it, I think about doing something else because the new idea that comes into my head will be quicker and work better than that will. At the minute, I just can't seem to finalise the idea that I want to go with over there. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm in an hour in about how I'm going to do it. So that's why I keep moving around and I keep moving on to other things. And I know that's not ideal because I feel like now we're really in a position to kind of push out that way um, because... I feel like we're going to do a big elephant enclosure here and it's going to take up a lot of room. And I don't really know what I want to do this way next either. Like, I don't know what animals I'm going to go to next. Obviously, over here, we're going to go with, like, a aquatic slash semi-aquatic theme. Um, so, I could potentially start over there. Like, I genuinely could. Um, I've got ideas for, you know, um, I, I, I want to do a house. Um I know it means it's like another internal building and people people do come down on me a lot because I do a lot of internal build work. Um, but I think if you go to zoos or if you look at zoo maps, you'll be surprised at how many animals are actually kept indoors, especially reptilians and stuff like that. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I do add a lot of houses. Um, it's just, a, it's, you know, I obviously aim for realism. And if, if I see a lot of that, then I'm going to add it myself. But yeah, I've got this idea for sort of a house that would contain all of the sort of um, all of the crocs, the alligator, um, the terrapin um, and potentially the frogs. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to throw the frogs in there, but I might do. And I've got this idea for a building that would do that. So obviously the caiman are going to go in there, the alligator and the gharial. Because um, if you if you don't know, ladies and gents, I've changed the animal list up a little bit um, so that we've subbed out a few animals and subbed some in. The list can be found on Discord, but obviously I know not everyone's on there. So what we have done, just to kind of update you while we're, while we're doing this bit, the saltwater crocodile has been subbed out for the alligator um, and the grey seal has been subbed out for the sea lion. And then to the animal list, I've added the beaver, the prairie dog, and the uh, and the bullfrog um there are obviously animals in that new dlc that people might want to be part of this but i'm not adding them for now what i've said i'm going to do is we will stick to that animal list and then when we get to the end of the project if we've got space then i will let you guys vote on what animals you would like to fill those spaces with the animals that we've got left that weren't picked remember the initial list was picked by my wife and um, a friend of mine um so i had nothing to do with it 
So uh, I just said, limit the animals. This is how many you can pick, and they 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 went they went for it. So uh, yeah. So um, obviously I've subbed some animals out. So I know what I want to do in this area. Um, this this pathway here um, is actually going to uh, come over this way and come to uh, you know an otter house where we're going to do our otter shows. And this is going to be the otter uh, habitat. And I'm also going to have a little bit over here as part of the otter habitat. And this piece here is actually going to be a bridge that goes over the top now i tried before before i started this i tried to start building this and quickly realized it is going to be probably the most complex habitat i have ever tried to build and it's why the path is there and nothing else because i just gave up because i, I couldn't get it to work and i was getting really really frustrated with it and i, and I genuinely couldn't get it to work so i'm not sure what i'm going to do but i don't want to build a habitat over here if I don't have a habitat here, and that's the issue, I kind of want to build out gradually as I should be. So you know, I've got I've got ideas for habitats. I do have ideas for habitats, um, but I just I can't. I haven't nailed it on like a hundred percent. I hope that I hope you sort of understand the point I'm trying to make. So the habitats that I've got ideas for is obviously our pygmy hippos, and they're going to go down here. I have an idea, obviously, but I'm only probably about 80% there with how I want to do it for the Fedit Fox, the Meerkat, and the Aardvark. And then I do have an idea for a house that would house potentially probably the frogs, the terrapins, and the crocodilian and alligator species. Uh, yeah, I've got an idea for a house that I want to want to put them in, basically. Um, so, yeah, they're the three ideas I've got. I'm not sure which one I'm going to go to next. I'm hoping, though, when we come back next episode, um, this is relevant and that I haven't, you know, just kind of knocked that on the head and I've not done any of that like I have the last two episodes because I feel like that's a little bit mean, my friends. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's the plan. And I hope you'll be back for the next one to join me as it comes together. And so there you go, my friends. We are done and dusted for another episode of Tropical Wing Zoo. I do hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I know, once again, it was different to what I promised. But I hope you like the build. I really, really do. And make sure you let me know uh, whether or not you've liked it in the comment section below. I know it's not for everybody. I know some people don't really care about the lizards. And, you know, they'd rather me build, you know, fun you know expansive habitats for lions and tigers and all this stuff but personally i actually prefer doing the smaller habitats um you know I, t I look at the primate habitat and i just think to myself what a headache that was and so i do prefer the smaller stuff um but that's just me i have to test myself and i'm gonna have to bite the bullet and start building some of the stuff i've been promising anyway my friends but if you are new to the channel please consider hitting that subscribe button the subscribers have gone insane over the last month it really has it's lovely to see so many new people watching the channel uh, drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it as well the more likes i get the more chance there is that more people in this wonderful world of youtube you will see my little pocket of the internet uh, but until next time my friends uh, i hope you all have a lovely day stay safe stay humble and i'll see you on the next one